can fly also. What's up, TFOs? Welcome to Charlotte Soccer Show. Another bonus edition here on a huge week for the club as we're getting ready for a road trip to Nashville. I'm already in Nashville, uh, hanging out, doing some work in my real job, but very excited to be here, uh, bringing you some uh, another bonus preview here from our Apple MLS Season Pass uh, series here that we've been doing all year. It's been awesome, and uh, thanks for all the positive response. We got a new one for you here today. Someone uh, making his debut on the show. Can't wait to introduce him for a second. Want to just say uh, Johnny's not here because he's out. He John's over talking to Dean, so we're we're doing double duty over here. So we'll be hearing from Dean later tonight. And also, just want to point out that yes, I am wearing a yellow shirt, but it's for Austin, Texas. It is not for Nashville, so I'm not here repping the enemy by any stretch. But very excited to welcome our guest. And as we do, I dug way in. I went into the video vault. I went diving into that vault and uh, found something great. So uh, check it out. Niako, Niako and Wells Thompson tangled. They're trying to hold Niako up, but he's there. Playtani Baba on the right. Fire rookie with a deep shot. Oh! Goal! Improbable! Impossible! Jaleelani Baba with the goal. He sprints over to the fire bench. A shot from nearly 45 yards out. The rookie from North Carolina. What a goal! Ian Joyce had no idea that it was coming through the guise of smoke. Ani Baba puts the fire up 2 1. Wow. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Not a lot you can say there. The, the, the Rapids are, are mystified. I, I, Ian Joyce had no idea that that ball was coming. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show Jaleel Anibaba from Apple Season Pass. How's it going, Jaleel? What do you think of that uh, trip back in time there to 2011? <laughs> Danny, it's going well. First of all, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, you really did go into the to the archives there. Um, Got to do I it. Pr I promise that the the lack of video quality isn't <laughs> really because of how old that clip is. It's more so because that was probably shot on a on a camcorder in that open cup match in uh, Peoria. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe an iPhone one uh, back in the day. But yeah, it was uh, really cool to find. I was just doing some, I was like, I'm, we're going to talk to Jaleel. I want to, you know, give him a nice intro clip. And then I found that goal and I was like, yes, this is open cup. This is peak MLS. I guess it would be 2.0 back uh, post Beckham, right? But uh, uh, very cool. And that was a hell of a goal, man. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. There's a little bit of some ironic connections there. So that was against Colorado yep. when Gary Smith was coaching the game. Um, now he's obviously going to be coaching against Charlotte FC at the weekend. Smart man, smart man. And you are now, you had a long career in MLS, played over a decade, played for several different clubs, Fire, uh, Orlando, I think, right? I went to, I was a brief member of Orlando through a trade from Seattle, but I ended up going to, to Kansas City in that gotcha. trade That's what I um up. yeah so but you started your career in carolina playing for the carolina dynamo in the uh developmental league right before you got before that goal that we just saw was was scored you started at the carolina dynamo so you've got some carolina roots you're now a nashville sc ambassador and a uh analyst for calling games on apple you've called some charlotte games this year and that's why we brought you in what do you what do you think of the crown so far joel yeah, well, first and foremost, Carolina is always going to be and stay near and dear to my heart because I got my my degree uh, from Chapel Hill. So so shout Don't out to, to all of the, the Carolina faithful um, in that in that way. Go Tar Heels always. Um, and what I've seen, quite frankly, from 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 Charlotte FC so far in this season is is one that that looks the best that I, I've seen Charlotte, quite frankly, in MLS. Um, I know it's early days. I know there there isn't a big sample size, um, but I like the way that Dean Smith has has the side playing. I, I like their their press defensively, their their organization um, as an eleven man unit when they defend and in attack. There there are some inspiring moments. I like Tavares's ability to come in off the line and feed Copetti. We saw him, right. um, you know, set up that that opportunity for, for him early in early in the match uh, at Toronto. I've always been a fan of Vargas, um, you know, but for me in, in the midfield, 
Urso is a huge pickup for Charlotte. Um, player that I always hated playing against, um, but but secretly admired. So now I can publicly admire him. I think that he's yeah. going to continue to do amazing things for Charlotte. Well, we'll talk more about the crown in a second and, and Dean Smith. I know you're going to be talking to him later after you talk to me, but just tell me a little bit about that speaking publicly and going from an MLS player who had a, you know, a long distinguished career into the broadcasting world. How, how did you get there and what do you love calling? Uh, what do you love about calling games in this league? Yeah. Um, I think first and foremost, you hit the nail on the head in terms of loving calling games and loving this side of, uh, you know, the experience and, and the business, uh, for me, what I what I was trying to do while I was playing was to try different things to figure out what other skill sets that I that I had and and liked and what I what I liked to do while I was still playing, so that um, you know it wasn't a scramble for me um, when I when I decided to retire. And luckily for for me, through a lot of help um, from you know my 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 web of support and, you know, people that gotta have a web, got to have a web. You have to people that I've come close to over the years. I, I started, you know, calling college games while I was playing in Columbus, which was my last season in 2022 um, at Ohio state and figured out very quickly that, Hey, no, nah, I, I like this. I like yeah. this a lot. Um, oh. I have a passion for this. Um, and, and yeah, did did games on radio last year for 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 Nashville, and now on season pass with MLS, and it's just a it's an honor to play in the league and then have the ability to to call games in that same league. What do you think of our guy uh, Eric Krakauer? I believe you've worked with him on some games, correct? Like he's yep. he's very he's you're the Nashville ambassador, he's a Charlotte ambassador. So this is kind of like a, is there going to be a battle in the booth on this one also, or where are you at with that? Nah, working with Eric is, is awesome. Um, he, he's an awesome partner. Um, you know, he, he does this thing as a, as a play by play announcer. Mm -hmm. He's, he does the work he puts, puts the work in. And I think as far as, as, as a team is concerned, a team of two, what's always most important is, is chemistry and, and the, the desire yeah. to make sure that your partner or your teammate is always in the best light possible. Um, so Eric has that ethos about him. Working with him is 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 awesome, um, and we've been able to find our pockets to to kick it too. So it's it's all good vibes between Eric and I. I love that. Where are you guys kicking it? You know, we had to be or we had to be authentic uh, <laughs> in terms of tapping into. Actually, I would say original, not authentic. Original and 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 speeding up the process. So. Soon as we got teamed up, we were watching a whole bunch of games on FaceTime on Zoom. To be honest oh, with cool. you, and then just like that talk, yeah, yeah, like talking through what what we see in in commentators, the games, X, Y, and Z fans, all that. Um, and yeah, every every week we we make sure that it's not just about calling games. We we go out to dinner, go out to lunch, breakfast, all of it together, awesome. just sit chat about life. Well, I'm here in Nashville, so if you need. A wingman. If you all need a third third guy to come hang with you, you know, tomorrow night before the yeah. game, you know, you, you know how to find me. But I think it's really cool. This is a very special weekend where all the MLS games are free on Apple Season Pass. Is that correct? Yeah, all games free on on MLS Season Pass on Apple for Beautiful. for this weekend. And I think that's a great way for fans to to tap into the experience. If you aren't a subscriber, or if you are, you tap know. In? You're you're piggybacking on your on your dad's family pass. Go and get your own, <laughs> but yeah, test yeah, it out yeah, this exactly. weekend. I'm lucky enough that I'm a season ticket member of Charlotte, so I just get it through that. But I would I would certainly uh, already be a subscriber. Actually, I was an Apple Plus subscriber before they even bought the league because I really like uh, some of their shows. But let's talk a little bit about this match. You're getting ready to call. Like I said, you got the the call with Dino coming up later today, so you may not have any insights there. But first, I want to talk about what Nashville's facing because this is a team that has been playing. CONCACAF Champions Cup. They've been facing Leo Messi every uh, midweek for the last two weeks, and they lost. They're out of the cup now, but they come home. They're probably want to get – they're like, okay, let's get our season started. Where do we stand with that with Charlotte coming in? Does Charlotte have a chance? Uh, is it Are they weaker or are they more galvanized? Both teams have equal opportunity to, to leave with three points in this one, in my opinion. I think Nashville is, is – uh, in a weird way right now because of the fact that 
they've had to juggle a multitude of comp competitions, two competitions at mm -hmm. the beginning of the season. And that's, that's a difficult thing to do. Gary Smith has had to figure out, okay, do I rest players? Do I play my first choice 11 in, in league CONCACAF champions, both. Um, and it's now that they've bowed out of, of CONCACAF champions, um, it'll be full facing MLS um, until, until league's cup. But, with that last fixture only being yesterday, you have to be able to pick yourself up off of off of that loss in Miami very, very quickly because again, the Charlotte side is coming into to Nashville and will be a strong side as well. Yeah, and we're we're not known as a great roadside necessarily, but we did uh if I'm not mistaken, we we had Nashville on the ropes last year, I think, and then and then we kind of yep. kind of gave it up at the end. So uh, I'd like to see – I mean, I know Mukhtar was out, and then he came back for last night's CONCACAF game. He's going to be a threat. Obviously, Nashville has lots of threats. We're a little bit – we have our guy, Mackenzie Gaines, who played for us last year, who's now uh, getting some run for Nashville. He started a few matches, subbed in a few matches, but that'll be interesting to see him. But I don't know. I, I think Nashville's vulnerable here. Maybe I'm just being optimistic, but I, I hope that they're vulnerable. I want to ask you about Dean Smith and – what he's done and how he's been able to sort of find his way in MLS coming over here from the Premier League. You, you're about to talk to him. I keep saying this, but you have talked to him in the past or uh, before previous matches. What is your impression of Dino? We love him. If you, uh, we do a thing on this show. We always say uh, Dino's at the wheel. Uh, this is our, this is like one of our favorite graphics here. Dino's at the wheel. So I this like is a picture that. from uh, preseason when he sported the Aviators. So yeah, Dino's at the wheel, Jaleel. What do you think, man? Are we, uh, are we in good hands here? I believe that you guys are in good hands. I have not seen anything that resembles any that would suggest otherwise. Um, and just speaking to to Dean Smith, he's a very upbeat individual, yeah. Uh, yeah. highly successful, his playing career, highly successful in his managerial career. Um, and, you know, what I always look for when either individuals, players, managers, pundits, whatever, who are quote unquote new to MLS, what's their what's their attitude like toward the league? And what's their attitude like toward the experience of newly engaging with the league? And he is fully locked in. Um, and I think that is the foundation of everything. And he's he seemed to change the culture, um, not only within the locker room, but of course how how the team plays tactically. And it seems that the players are are taking to it to it very well. Spoke to to Nathan Byrne just not too long ago. Um, he's very complimentary of how, how Dean Smith has, has empowered pretty much all players throughout the locker room, um, young and experienced. And, and that's something that, that all players tend to tend to respect and will subsequently fight for on the pitch. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Culture change is, is probably the best way to say it. We just had a, a real rough culture last year here in the club. There was a lot of uncertainty and decisions being made to where players would have a good match then be not in the side the next match and not know why and things like that and I think Dean has cleared that up big time I love his straightforwardness and as you say his positive personality he's just he's just a great guy and he's unlocked burn what do you think of burn like burns one of our become one of our key players I really love everything he's doing yeah first of all uh, on Dean Smith with with players all players want is to know where they stand and mm -hmm. to know what benchmarks they need to hit to improve um, either their situation individually or how they can get in better standing with with managers. That's all players want. And last week, Dean Smith told told Eric and I, look, if if I give the starting 11 the shirts to play, their responsibility is to have a seven out of 10 performance. They'll be playing up the next week. And I've played for managers in that way where they know you, they give you very, very clear benchmarks. Okay. I basically just need to not let you down to continue mm -hmm. playing. So the fight is in the middle, middle of the week to get to that starting 11 and then just to reward the manager there. As far as Nathan Byrne, I, I rate him. I, I like his ability to, to affect the attack when he carries the ball forward. He's very, he's good technically, defensively, 1v1 defending. He's mm -hmm. sound. And that's that's what you need on both sides of the ball in in this day and age of football on the, uh, um, in the outside back position. Um, and I like his his partnership with with Vargas as well. Um, they seem to be close on and off the pitch, and it, it shows. I, I liked what I saw from from him um, in Toronto.
Yeah, I think the whole team just loves Kerwin. Every, everyone on the team just like thinks Kerwin is their little brother. Like every guy thinks Kerwin. Is, oh, that's my little brother. Oh, no, he's my little brother. So pretty funny, but we love Kerwin. I love just the defensive organization that Dean Smith has brought. I don't think he was necessarily known for being a defensive-minded manager over in the Premier League, but just with the basic principles he's been able to establish, we've shown so much improvement. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Uh, I What I was impressed with in Toronto um, was – Charlotte's ability to 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 frustrate Toronto. Toronto didn't have the better chances. Charlotte did, and yeah. if it wasn't for an absolute right. worldy of a goal from Insigne, mm -hmm. you're probably walking out of there with at minimum a point. And if Copetti scores that chance at the beginning of the or in the middle of the first half, yeah. you're you're poised to get all three. Um, so for me where where i was impressed on the defensive side of the ball you're talking about defensive organization is mm -hmm. the press the press to me looks very clear it looks um you know forward leaning in terms of yes. the high line the line is high copetti whoever's leading the line is 20 yards above the center circle that's normally 10 to 15 yards higher than teams press especially on the road um and then there's good cohesion in the middle of the field urso goes right away westwood goes right away the goes right away whenever those passes come into that midfield block um and it's it's always a good foundation when your your defense is solid yeah totally agree totally agree about the press the pressure has helped that high press dean dean likes his attackers to defend and his defenders to attack i think all good managers have an air of that and it's going to be tough I, we're probably going to be missing Copetti for this game he missed training this week there's talk we haven't heard anything yet but he they they said he might have picked up a knock in training on Monday I like as I'm recording this Dean is speaking uh, to my my co-host John uh, is at the presser so we'll probably find out more after this episode but you may not be able to call Copetti this week but I just want to thank you whoever you call I'm really looking forward to your call Jaleel I've enjoyed the calls and now getting to know you a little bit better, I'm going to be listening even that much closer. And I, I hope the rest of the Charlotte FC fan base feels the same. You're a really nice guy, and I appreciate your time coming in. And uh, let's hit it again that Apple's free this weekend. Let's get on it, right? Yeah, exactly. Get off of the family plan and get your own MLS Season Pass membership because you got a free week to tap into all the games. And I'll see you guys on the call in Nashville, Charlotte FC. It'll be a good game for sure. Thanks for having me, brother. I really appreciate it. I got to do one more before you go. We got it. We, I just got to do, it. I just, I just got to do it. Be, I got to have you talk me through this one. If you don't mind, Let's go. if, Let's if go. you don't what mind, it? it's, the, uh, <laughs> it's, 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 it's this goal. I just want to know, like, what made you shoot from here, bro? <laughs> so first of all, Logan Paul's my mentor lays it out to me. And what I saw is just the ability <laughs> to hit it. Nobody Man, was post. really, nobody was really stepping. I tried to just get, you know, good contact on the ball and you know, you, sh you if you shoot you have the ability to score and it, it went in it's a good it's a good first goal and again don't judge the quality don't think that it <laughs> since it was 2011 the cameras were that bad back then it, this had to be off of a camcorder but. yeah yeah this is some personal video on someone's personal youtube but i mean <laughs> folks he's 50 yards out here hugging the sideline and it's just laser beautiful beautiful yeah. stuff jaleel Good, good memory. Shout out to all my Chicago Fire boys. That's that's where it all started for me. So appreciate you very much, man. We'll link up. We'll link up in Nashville. How about it? Yeah, let me know, man. You got my email. You got my email. You got my email. So I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. And everybody, uh, if you're coming to Nashville, come find me. Let's party. Can't wait. It's going to be a hell of a, a game. And I think we're going to get the three points. So I will have to go back and listen to you and Eric on the rewatch, Jaleel. And uh, you know I will. So until then, I will say uh, adios and for the crown. Sounds Maybe. great. Let me know if Nashville barbecue is better than Carolina barbecue. That's what we want to know.